Uh, well, uh, yes, welcome everybody. My name is Brendan Gale. I'm the Chief Executive of the Richmond Football Club and it's my pleasure, Football absolute club. pleasure, to invite the Ministers uh, to our headquarters today. And uh, clearly there's been a long and warm and enduring relationship between the two countries and you know, wonderful shared values, but particularly a shared uh, love of sport, in particular cricket. So we talked a bit about that. and. We've introduced a minister to, to our sport, which is which is football, which is Australian rules football, which is it's the it's the biggest sport in Australia on most measures, and uh, um, and over many years we've been looking to deepen our connection with the local indigenous community, and and previously we looked at actually playing an exhibition game in India. Um, we've even gone as far as looking at a venue in Mumbai, and uh, um, I think COVID got in the way of those discussions, but who knows. Um, this, this relationship might lead to to a, to a game in India in due course, which should be which should be wonderful for our two countries and our sport and our club. So welcome, ministers, and on that note, I'll hand over to you. Thanks, Brendan. It's great to be here um, at the home of the Richmond Football Club with my good friend Payush Goyal. Uh, we have just signed an historic free trade agreement between Australia and India, and this free trade agreement will lead to a broadening of our economic relationship and a broadening of our relationship across the board. And one of the great things that I would love to see as a result of this FBA is an exhibition game being played uh, in India uh, to demonstrate all that is great about Australia and all that is great about Australian rules football. So I was very pleased to be able to invite my friend Payush Goyal down here to the Richmond Football Club. Uh, Payush, our agreement, I think, will strengthen our relationship uh, like there is no tomorrow. And my hope is uh, that we'll see an exhibition game of Australian rules football being played between Richmond and another AFL team in the near future. So I'll get you to say a few words. And then, Tom, uh, we might ask you what you think it would be like playing an exhibition game uh, in India. I think it's just wonderful to be here and learn about the new sport about which I really didn't know <laughs> until this moment. But uh, a remarkable sport, very physical, something not up my alley. And uh, any case, I'm getting a complex looking at the <laughs> tall players with all the muscles. And But it'll be wonderful to add one more dimension to this relationship. Cricket has always connected Australia and India. I think uh, it'll be great to have your team, and this, I believe, is your your home sport team. You support Richmond, I right? do, I do. Right, so, and well, Tigers are very much India's pride, and uh, we would love to see if we can introduce this sport in India. A little too physical for the typical peace-loving Indians, I think. <laughs> but uh, maybe interesting to get them at least some exposure about this new sport. India's fast accepting sport as a way of life. As a, We are encouraging youngsters to go in more and more for sports. And I think the partnership that we have signed does have the soft power element in it. And we do believe that sports, culture, art, all of these will be dimensions which will bring our two people closer together. I hope uh, this new sport can also bring in once again that competitive yet collaborative spirit. Just like in cricket, you bashed us a lot <laughs> once upon a time. Once upon a time. Maybe in this it will take us some time, but I promise you, once the Indians get cracking, We'll beat you at football, <laughs> Australian football also. Well, that would be a great day. That would be a great day. Thank you for introducing no. me to Australian football. Pleasure, please. Tom? Uh, yeah, I, I think absolutely. It would be so exciting to be able to go over to India and um, yeah, explore um, playing an exhibition game over there. And, um, yeah, hopefully it will help strengthen the relationship with the, um, the big uh, Indian community that we've got here in Melbourne, which... Um, yeah, we, we'd love to fit, um, further that relationship. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'll be very excited. Do you have it. friends here, Indian friends? Yep, yep, yep definitely. And do you like Indian food? Yeah, I love Indian food. Yeah. <laughs> you love Indian food. Great. So oh, I, don't, I don't like it too hot, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, definitely. So. Great. So it'll be great to have you over in India. We'll welcome you. 
see the sport and maybe encourage some young boys and girls to get into it. I heard your sister also now plays. Yeah, my sister um, plays at Richmond as well. So, um, yeah, it's very exciting. So, yeah, girls and boys um, both have the opportunity to play now, which is um, great for the game. Lovely. Well said. Great. Thank well you said. so much Thank for you. your invitation. And I really enjoyed coming to your club. Thanks. Thank you for Thank coming. Thank you. Well love it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Any questions? Do we, do we have any kind of proposal or discussion to promote... Uh, collaboration in sports technology as such? Uh, very much so. As part of this historic agreement, that is exactly what we want to see happen, is greater collaboration when it comes on the, to activity on the sporting field. We've already discussed uh, what we've been able to achieve in cricket and how we can bring uh, collaboration in cricket closer and closer together. We're looking at training academies, um, and there's no reason why we can't broaden that out. Uh, Bayush was talking before about yoga and how important yoga is uh, to India and the Indian community and how we can enhance yoga here in Australia. So that's something else we're, we're looking at. Uh, when it comes to the arts, there's more that we can be doing. So that right across the board, this agreement uh, will lead to our two countries doing a lot more together, and that's what's so great about it. You know, this time... Uh, this is our 75th year of independence and uh, on the 21st of June when the world celebrates International Yoga Day, we can actually bring in that day from Australia. So we can look at some uh, different venues where the uh, International Yoga Day can be celebrated on the 21st. I remember uh, on the 31st of December 2021, you brought in the new year. Right. in hopefully the post-COVID world from Australia. And I saw the fireworks at Sydney Harbour yeah. and it was really nice to see people back on the streets, back in action. So let's see if we can, uh, our teams can work together and maybe have yoga at the Richmond Football Club also. On that day, we'll, we'll work on that. And one of the great things about the agreement as well is that yoga instructors can now come from India to Australia, that's part of the agreement that we, we reached, so, which was one of Payusha's uh, asks of us and one that we, we welcome because obviously all the therapeutic benefits that yoga brings is so great and I think as members of parliament we probably need to do a bit more yoga, just keep <laughs> no, ourselves calm. We, we'll make sure we'll send you some very good cooks, Indian chefs who are also a part yes, of the they agreement, are. They are. so we'll first feed you a good curry. <laughs> Yes. And then yeah, you burn doing the that, calories yeah. doing, doing yoga. yoga. That so we are, we are balancing and making sure everybody's healthy, safe and secure. secure. Brilliant. Brilliant. One Brilliant. question. Yes. Uh, you have done um, the no, trade no, 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 no. deal, business, education, sports. What about geopolitics? How this can collaborate in? and culminate into geopolitics. Well, we're, we're, we've already seen when it comes to geo... Oh, sorry, yeah. We've already seen when it comes to geopolitics that collaboration taking place through the Quad. And when we came into government uh, in 2013, uh, the Quad met at officials level, then met at foreign ministers level. We were able to host a, a Quad meeting here in Melbourne earlier in the year and we've now seen the Quad meetings take place at the leaders level. So we're seeing that strong development at the geopolitical level of the relationship which is absolutely fantastic uh, and we want to see that grow as well because keeping the Indo-Pacific free and open and a place where liberal democracies can flourish is just so, so important. Well, I think uh, Australia has shown huge uh, leadership in uh, ensuring that the world becomes a better place to live in. Prime Minister Scott Morrison and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have both been at the forefront of bringing together like-minded countries. We now have a court between Japan, Australia, the US and India, which has many dimensions, both strategic, political, they're working to ensure peace and stability, greater economic partnership between countries in this uh, region. And I'm quite sure that uh, that dimension on geopolitics, that dimension on the larger world good 
is going to bring our two countries closer together. Uh, will it also bring UK and Canada together, as you mentioned? In the well, that just came out of the out of the blue. That I didn't realize that, having recently concluded Australia, we are working already with the uh, UK and with Canada, all four of us Commonwealth countries. So, I mean, I, I on a lighter note, I'd said this creates a new quad. Uh, kind of uh, position and I think this collective engagement between the four countries can actually be good for all four of us mm. and help us in different areas. Each one has their own skills. Uh, Australia is a great provider of very, very important minerals, intermediate products and has huge skills on the soft power like sports, tourism. UK is both a manufacturing hub as well as very strategically located an important financial center. Canada, on the other hand, is a market, uh, is a place which provides market to a lot of uh, North America, which has strengths in uh, different areas. Maybe agriculture is one of them. They also have a lot of petroleum and gas, uh, which is required by other parts of the world. So all four countries have different skill sets. We provide labor, we provide uh, manufactured goods which need a lot of labor input at very competitive prices, world-class quality. So we can actually support each other and all economies and all the people of the four countries can benefit. Uh, last question, Sorry. sir. Sorry. One Sorry. question. What will be the dual university arrangement and uh, what will be the regulations for both countries? Dual degrees. Dual degrees. Dual degrees. Uh, dual degrees. Uh, will just be fantastic for both countries because if you're an Indian student or an Australian student, you'll be able to do one or two years of your degree in Australia and then one or two years of your degree in India. So it will just see collaboration between universities grow. My hope is we'll start to see dual degrees uh, between universities in Australia and universities in India. Uh, and I, I think it will just enhance the collaboration at the higher education level. That will enhance research and development. So it, it's a really, really exciting part of this agreement and especially when you think about the number of Indian students who come here to Australia to get educated but also the pent up demand from Australian students to want to travel again and study abroad and India would just be such a fantastic destination for young Australians to go and learn. Well I think um, we have a number of students who come to Australia already. The advantage with dual degree is that we'll help bring quality education to more and more Indians. So the cost comes down significantly, almost becomes half. Uh, Australian students will also come to India, learn about India, explore India. They will get an exposure to our skill sets, for example, maths or IT areas where we have a lot of uh, strength, the STEM uh, system. Uh, Australia has a lot of offerings on research, on innovation. So I think when we, when the collective knowledge is shared between the people of two countries, students of two countries, everybody stands to gain. And we could actually uh, start recognizing each other's degrees. We could start recognizing course content, creating more universally acceptable course content. The new education policy opens its doors, India's doors to a lot more international engagement and I hope Australia will be amongst the first to come in. So this dual degree arrangement will be kind of a separate agreement altogether? We are working on that between the two countries. It will take some time. There will be mutual recognition of our agreements, of our education qualifications. But at the same time, we are also looking at a degree given jointly, let's say by an IIT in India and a university in Australia or by a medical college in India and a medical college in Australia. So it gives them that much more exposure, that much more experience, newer skill sets, newer knowledge, and will be good for students in both countries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.